when you come to Ecuador, these cities have, you know, <laughs> skyscrapers and high-speed internet and, you know, all the accoutrements and restaurants, all different food. It's, it's very, it's, you know, it's just a wonderful circumstance. You know, you can go to Mercados, you can go to Super Maxis, whatever. It's a very different situation than what I think most people think. Yep. So the, the, the culture is great. The people are very welcoming. They use the dollar. Last summer, you may remember, we had a print 9.1% inflation. It was the highest since 82. So if you looked at the commodities chart, lithium, gasoline, soybeans, everything was at highs, and gold and silver and platinum were negative. Right. <laughs> we have the highest inflation in 42 years. These have worked for about three or 4,000 years, <laughs> but they're not working now. So yeah, I mean, you're competing with no one, you right. know, in general, over your ideas. So the opportunity is incredible. The, the downside is that execution is 10x more difficult. <laughs> So right. you've got 10x the opportunity, and then you've got 10x the difficulty in executing. Um, because in general, in Ecuador, there's a lot less pressure on your life than there is back home. The fourth thing that may really blow Bitcoin out of the water is there's some pretty persistent rumors that two or three countries in Latin America and two or three in the Middle East are planning to, to, adopt. to adopt it. It's got sloppy up north. You could have problems in the stores with food trucks, whatever. Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining us, Jesse. Joined today by Robert Ryerson. Psyched to have this guest for you here today. Uh, we'll introduce Robert in a moment. But um, yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a different episode. Um, I think it's going to be a cool episode. It's going to be kind of a mix between a podcast, a uh, expat profile, and sort of a professional spotlight because Robert really has some knowledge um, on all of those things, you prefer, Robert or Bob? Bob? Bob, yeah. I, I normally call him Bob, but, you know, <laughs> figured well, I'd introduce you formally. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, Bob has some really, un, really has a unique perspective, I think, on, you know, eco economics, the economy, um, Ecuador, the states, some political stuff. He's got experience in both markets. Um, Bob, by trade, is a retirement planner, so he's the principal at his company. I'll let him talk about this in a moment. Um, where they do retirement planning and other uh, tax and financial services. So um, he has that background. And then you've been coming to Ecuador now for a long time. Almost 10 years, yeah, almost yeah. 10 years. So why don't we start with just a little bit about who you are, where are you from, how, you know, your business, and then we'll kind okay. of take it from there. So, yeah, so I uh, hail from North Jersey, live in Central Jersey now, uh, married with four grown daughters, and have been a uh, financial planner for, well, 1984, so almost 40 years. And gradually, just courtesy of the demographics, uh, you know, makes sense to lean into the retirement income planning, tax planning, state and legacy planning aspects. So that's what we focus on, <clears throat> 55 to 75 years old. We teach classes, we do a lot of dinner presentations. In fact, we did one uh, here a couple nights ago in Cuenca at a beautiful old mansion. There's uh, eight, seven, 8,000 expats in Cuenca. Uh, retired largely, but they can still uh, improve things a bit. So we had a very nice reception. We had 31 people the other night. So we've been do coming here doing classes and uh, fell in love with the country about nine or 10 years ago and uh, uh, met a bunch of people here, um, both Ecuadorians and uh, Americans, and just fell in love with the culture and the country. And it's, it's unique. Cuatro Zonas blows us away. Galapagos, the coast, the Andes, the Orient, all completely different mm -hmm. and uh, obviously you've been following you guys for a few years and uh, admire what you did 10 years ago frankly so s since you brought that up um, <laughs> let's let the in terms of Cuenca and like some of the other places let's spend a couple of minutes on that um, Cuenca is um, pretty much I would argue probably the go-to destination for, sure. for foreigners yes. in, in Ecuador sure um, by, Maybe not far. so much for travelers, but for pe for expats, for people yes. who are moving here. Um, Some on the coast, Salinas and Manta a little bit, but basically Cuenca, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of other hot spots, you know, up up north, up by Otavalo in that area, Cotacachi, Cotacachi, Cotacachi right. you have right. that. You've got some spots on the coast. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, Loja Vilcabamba is just kind of on the radar a bit. Then you've got Banos. So, you know, there's there's some places people go, but Cuenca is the leader for yes. sure. Yeah. Um, and... You know, for, for our viewers, some people are, you know, maybe have, a lot of people have never been to Ecuador, haven't been to Cuenca, Loja, Vilcabamba, Quito, you know, all these other places. And, you know, it would be great to hear kind of from someone who's spent time in both places, 
what are some of those differences? Um, and just to sort of preface for a second, you know, Cuenca, Cuenca off the bat is about uh, 1,500 feet higher in elevation than Loja, so it's a different, cooler. It's different cooler. climate. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also a larger city, mm -hmm. so it, it definitely has much more of a city no feel. If you're looking for yeah. nightlife and great restaurants yeah. and all, Cuenca is gonna you're gonna do a lot better in Cuenca than Loja, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, you know, Loja is much slower paced, much more relaxed, kind of a yeah. little bit different culture um, as well. But what what have you you know if, if you were sort of saying to someone, hey, if you're into this move to Cuenca, if you're into this Vilcabamba Lohar, how would you compare this? Well, the first thing I would say is that, that Louie and I, when we started coming down, um, we did the research, we had preconceived notions. The average American has preconceived notions about Ecuador. They still think it's a banana republic. Um, I think America's now a banana republic, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> but, but I think, so one of the first things to get out of their heads is that when you come to Ecuador, these cities have, you know, <laughs> skyscrapers and high-speed internet and you know all the accoutrements and restaurants all different food it's it's very it's you know it's just a wonderful circumstance you know you can go to Mercados you can go to super maxis whatever it's a very different situation than what I think most people think yep. so the, the the culture is great the people are very welcoming they use the dollar it's easy I don't know we'll talk about whether that's a good or bad thing sure, in a few sure. minutes that could be a problem but the, the climate the food the organic you know Cuenca is 8,400 feet up. In the United States, if we go 8,400 feet up, we've got snow. Yeah. Here at the equator, it's it's like San Diego every day, and this is even warmer. So, um, so you know, if you if 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 you can deal with a little bit cooler, you know, sweater in the morning, shirt sleeves in the middle of the day, and sweater at night, that's Cuenca. Mm -hmm. Everything you want, restaurants, culture, Loja also. You know, the music capital, a little warmer. You know, you don't swim in Cuenca, you do swim in Vilca. And, and Loja. So um, we did also, uh, we got friendly with a gentleman, uh, Wilson, who was, uh, became our, a great friend and, a, and our concierge. And he drove us all over the place. We explored the coast. We went up to Cotacachi. There's a lot of Americans up there. Love to own a condo up there. So there's just different things for different people. The coast is, you know, you're whale watching and you have a different lifestyle than you would here in the, in the, uh, in the south. But I think we, we've you know, complimented you and your team because the South is really a wonderful place to be on all fronts. I mean, you don't miss anything. You want some stuff, you go to the city. <coughs> Basically, the lifestyle that you guys have here, even during COVID, if you want to kind of hint at that a little bit, it was different than Cuenca and Quito. Sure. And, you know, the, it, it, didn't, it didn't affect your lifestyle that much down here. They weren't locking down like crazy. You know, like they did in the States. And think about what they did in Canada and, and Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, surprising, you know. Terrible. So just a, a very nice uh, freer lifestyle here. Uh, as you hinted in one of your videos recently, the skies are clear here. There's no strange cloud formations, right. which, <laughs> which is uh, one of our concerns up north as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So just a lot of reasons to come here. I think the fact that you guys run these retreats, what, every quarter? Uh, yeah, we're doing about four a year. Yeah. And uh, you may want to talk about that if anybody's interested to get a good sense of, of what the lifestyle would be here. What are the retreats? Four or five days? Uh, no, they're actually the nine week? days. Oh, it's yeah. nine days. So okay. they're nine days, and they're, it's, so it's a jam-packed nine days. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a full. You get if you come for those nine days, you will leave with knowing everything, you know, and experience. That's it. worth. So that's it's, worth it's, it. Uh, we brought a, a friend who hasn't been here, and he was just blown out when you go to the the mercados here, <laughs> the, the the food and the the fresh fish and the meat and you know it's just we don't have that at uh, all. You, you were you before we started recording you were sharing with me a, a story where uh so i think it was was it amish farmers yeah. got yeah. raided just, due to raw milk or whatever yeah i mean of. this very well-known famous uh amish farm uh in lancaster pennsylvania just got raided I don't know why, you know, so, so what are they searching for? Raw milk and, and yeah. organic eggs and well, stuff? It's, it's I, I was laughing, I was, I was kind of internally chuckling to myself because before I came here, I had just gone a few blocks that way to pick up my milk there you go. that the lady brings once a week, you know, that literally has been, you know, been the cow's been milked an hour ago, ago. yeah, <laughs> right. and um, pick it not up my milk, and there's no, yeah, right, so and there's not even, you know, there's no regulatory framework here for any of that stuff that I'm aware of at all, much less, much less agencies that enforce it, right? Yeah, right, the yeah. control of the food up north is just getting, uh, you know, and God knows what they're putting in it, so we're, we're increasingly concerned and find this story, I, you know, I don't know what, what it would take, you know, you a zillion little farmers bringing stuff to the markets here, you know, how would you really 
right. clamp down on that. So it's, it's a pretty appealing food situation. The fruits, I was saying to you before we started filming that the juices in the morning here just blow us out. I mean, it's just, I never heard of this fruit, but it's delicious. <laughs> it's good every day. It's, it's, it's who go to what, you know, so we learn, but it's just fantastic. So what, um, you know, Ecuador has received, and I think some of it's warranted, some of it isn't, but Ecuador has received a lot of bad press over the last, I don't know, six months or something, mostly around safety, mostly around crime, crime and issue, safety. Yeah. Um, what, you know, you've been coming here for about a decade, right. so you're obviously super familiar with the country. You've been, you know, when you come well, from, my, place, from yeah. my observations, right, you, you, you <clears> basically <throat> rent a van and you travel all around all the country. Around, yeah. So you've, you know, you're really exploring the country in its entirety. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on safety? How do you feel when you're here? Do you feel like there's a big difference now? You know, overall, how do you feel about safety? Well, I think the, the distinction has to be made. Cuenca, you know, along the Andes, where, and where you guys are here in the south, it's not an issue, really. It's really on the coast. Uh, obviously, they shot uh, Villa Vicencio, Vicencio yeah. <laughs> a candidate in broad daylight in the, in the capital in the presidential race. But we've done it in the United States, right? Back in '63 and other other times, Reagan, Reagan got, Reagan shot, got well, shot, yeah. Wallace got shot. So it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the problem is, and we love the coast, Manta, and this area, but. You know, the, four years ago, it was not, three, four years ago, it was not like this. And something, the drug trade may be coming up from Peru, I assume. I mean, if you're a fisherman and they say to you, hey, what, you can either fish for the next 10 months or, or here you go, one shot. Or 10 years, maybe. <clears throat> or five years, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very hard to argue with. It's kind of like the, the magistrates and the police, the whole Mexican situation, right? How do, you, how do you really, you know, fight that off? So it's a concern <laughs> because we love, the, we love the coast. And if they don't get that straight, they shot... They shot the mayor of Mount Manta, Manta yeah. with, a, with a soccer player. They shot up a, a funeral home. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know, you know, we're, we're friendly with Ryan Kelly. He's, he's having a great year. So I think the Americans understand that it's, look, every major city in the United States is, is in trouble now with the crime, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that people don't go to New York or Philly or whatever. So it's right. the same thing. If you have a condo on the coast in Manta, you, I think you're fine and you walk to the, go get your gelato or your, your supermarket, whatever, or the mall. But, you know, it's more of a concern on the coast. Um, it's been fine pretty much elsewhere. I know you had one or two crazy things happen here, but that, it happened. I mean, I think if you look at the crime situation, the joke I said the other night wasn't really a joke to start the presentation was, you guys have a young president trying to fight crime here. We have an old president not trying to fight crime, <laughs> but yeah, we are. Yeah. So, uh, welcoming it maybe in, over the border. So, just crazy right, stuff right. going on. We're, we're in some strange waters, obviously. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, and then what's your interest, so is your, is your interest in Ecuador personal, is it business, is Both. it a mix? Yeah, Both, so talk yeah. a little bit about just what's, <coughs> why is Ecuador interesting to you in the first place? Well, as you and I have talked for the last two, three years, the, the, the upside, the opportunities here relative to pretty mature market in the States is, is just wide open. We were just talking before we started shooting uh, the vanilla story, right? You know, vanilla is this finicky, finicky spice. But you, you know, this is one of the few places you could do it here successfully. Uh, you, ha you, you and I talked about a watermelon plan. You know, you could <laughs> you could make money with watermelons here, table grapes, you know, chitty moya, sure. whatever the case is. So, it just seems endless. And one of the things we'd really like to do is to get some client money. Uh, if, if we have some happy money from Bitcoin or gold or silver or things outside the dollar, the idea of keeping it outside the dollar and doing agriculture or foreign real estate projects with you in Ecuador. You know, uh, you, you've got people coming in from Europe, you've got people coming in from the U.S. I know you want to talk about some of your projects as well, but, you know, what, so our longer term goal, frankly, is to, to do more business here, to get more money here, to get people here, to get second homes here. It's, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful place. I mean, look where we're sitting today. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, personal and, and business. Yeah, we're very fascinated. Uh, they use the dollar. The, the government is relatively stable here. I think um, I think there's tremendous instability at home. I mean, we've got who's on the ballot, who's off the ballot. It's really right. getting crazy right. here, right? So we, we don't we don't think, for example, we're not so sure <coughs> there is an election in November this year. We think it's possible there's a pause that things are sloppy enough uh, politically, or God forbid, in cities, or whatever. You know, there's no we're not in normal waters. Yeah. Nothing nothing would surprise us at this juncture uh, after have what we've seen. <clears throat> you got uh, 91 charges in four locations on Trump and 
and they want to take him off the ballot, and the Republicans will take Biden off the ballot. Biden is one, maybe one fall away from being off stage anyway. His wife says, for health reasons, we're going to, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, we, we're, in, we're just in strange waters. Well, we should talk about that on, in regard to the markets. Too. Yeah, so maybe, and maybe this can lead into some of that. But so traditionally, markets like Ecuador are considered high risk. And markets like the U.S. are considered low risk, right. traditionally, right? right? Traditionally, yeah. Um, Developed versus emerging. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you look at the history of Latin America, and, and you look at the history of the U.S., that makes total sense, right? You've got rev Historical. revolutions yeah. Yeah. here all the time, and you've got currency crises, yep. and you've got all kinds of stuff that goes on. And in the U.S., we've been relatively stable for, you know, since at least years. World War II. Yeah. Right. After World War II, right? Um, yeah, uh, monetarily and and politically. So so that has made sense, you know, traditionally historically. You know, I came to the conclusion twelve years ago or or whatever it was. Hey, I don't I don't think the dollar is as stable as people realize. I think that the debt markets are are. I, I don't think people realize how levered all of their assets as well as their economic activity is to the debt markets. Which, which made me uncomfortable at the time. Um, and I started to look at the US for me personally, like what I'm doing with capital, what I'm doing with time and energy. I started to look at it as kind of a risky market, you know, for, for me, right? I feel like, well, if, if there's a hiccup in the debt market, what happens to my exactly. XYZ investment right. and stuff like that? And then even politically, you could make the argument there's much more risk now in Absolutely. the US than there Absolutely. has been traditionally. So what, how do you look at that? Like, do you, you know, why are, are you looking towards Ecuador investment wise because of some of those things? Or like, how do you look at those two markets at this point? Yeah, a as a diversification for sure, right? And so they, uh, let me give you an example of how crazy things are. Now, people, there's complacency in markets. You know, if the markets in real estate or gold or, or stocks are up for so long, people just get complacent. So here's how crazy it is right now. So we have 34 trillion in debt. We just hit that on, on the 29th of December. On the 18th of September, we hit 33 trillion. So we're growing, you know, trillions per per year now. People right? can't even conceive of what a trillion dollars. Well, one of the means, things, we, right? Like, so what, speaking to to, <coughs> uh, to that point, Lou and I show when we teach the class that we show a little two three minute video, a visualization of trillions because who the heck knows what that is, right? And it's it's fascinating. It starts out here's a hundred dollar bill. If you wrap it, it's ten thousand. If you put it like a tea chest, it's a million. You put it on a pallet, stack it up, it's a hundred million. You do ten pallets, picture the hundred dollar bills, yeah. it's a billion. Right. And then it says, you know, the slide says, you know, put your seatbelt on or something like right. that because the next, uh, the next shot is a football field yeah. of double double stacked pallets, and that's one trillion. One trillion. And so the of truth hundred dollar bills. of hundred dollar bills. Thank you. Right, yeah. right. Not twenties. So the truth is, nobody's getting paid back thirty four trillion. The Germans, the Chinese, the no. Korean, not, not never going to happen. No. So as long as people play this game of we'll, we'll roll it. And by the way, the euros and the yen, all the paper, the, all the fiat stuff is every nuts. currency on earth. So yeah. one of the things that you and I have been amazed at is f from ten or twelve years ago is how long they've been able to exactly. keep this going. Speaking of which, in the oh eight oh nine dip, right. They, they, they remember the phrase "too big to fail," yeah. right? So previously, we had had the savings and loan crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, they let things fail. The, the capitalist system has to purge itself, right? That's mm -hmm. how the growth comes. You, you know, you have failure. The assets are mismanaged. They go to better hands. I don't care if it's a big name. Sorry, the, the didn't work. Citibank, Eastman Kodak, whatever. Yep. But that they didn't let that happen. They bailed everybody out, printed money, and blew the bubble bigger. Yep. Uh, ZERP, zero interest rate policy, they had a name for it. So m mortgages are not two and a half or three. What the heck is that? I mean, God bless anybody who did that, right? Which is a lot of people. Sure. You know, we encouraged everyone to refinance repeatedly. So there's, you know, 30 year paper at 2.8. Wow. Uh, and, 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 and then CDs and bonds went to zero or 1% for 12 years. So that, yeah. so that forced, you know, that's why you got this bubble into real estate and stocks. And then we've had a little break, but now we're at the point where if you know people understand the treasuries are the debt, right? So if the yield on treasuries are four or five on thirty four trillion, payments go up. So so right now, um, the second largest item in the budget after Social Security is interest. It's it's ahead of Medicare and Medicaid right now. And that's air. You're not getting any value for it, right? So that's not sustainable. So Powell and Janet Yellen will come out and say, you know, the, the, the financial media says this is not sustainable and yet here we are. Right, We're, it's early January of 2024. We just broke 34 trillion. Uh, 
you know, it's not sustainable. I don't know what happens, but to your point with the dollar, then simultaneous to them printing money like crazy, trillions per quarter, uh, per year, now you've got the BRICS. We should talk about the BRICS a little bit. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, right? Nothing new, 9, 10, 11 years, mm -hmm. but accelerating. So the BRICS don't want to use the dollar, right? So we've been very spoiled in the States since 73, the petrodollar, Henry Kissinger. Now, 50 years of everybody has to transact everything in dollars. So just recently, you probably know, late August, there was a meeting in South Africa, yep. and five countries joined. 31 countries want to join the BRICS. Five did get approved, including Argentina, yep. Iran, um, Ethiopia, United Arab Emirates. I can't remember what the fifth. Anyway, about three, four weeks ago, the United Arab Emirates came out and said, no more dollars for oil. Oh, Saudi Arabia was the other one. So if, if United Arab Emirates, that's big news, no more dollars for oil. So if, imagine if Saudi Arabia says that. I don't know, or yeah. Iran says that. So Russia already doesn't want to use the dollar. China doesn't want So the struggle that we have is convincing people, I want to get back to the complacency issue. They sit with us, they have literally, Jesse, 85, 95% of their money in their 60s or 70s in stocks, mm -hmm. okay? We ask them to take 5% and put it into silver at 10-year lows, or right. if they get Bitcoin or gold or whatever, sure. farmland, so those or alternative something assets, out assets, of the dollar. Yeah. And they've got to think about it because they're comfortable. Paper's yeah. been so good for so long. Yeah. So the Ecuador story, yes, it's the dollar, but if you have, it's foreign real estate, it's agriculture, there's, you know, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, diversification. So we're trying to do that. And I think the returns here uh, can have been and can be good. Yeah. So that, you know, I just think that's the problem is that there's tremendous complacency with the paper money. And we try to say, say to people politely, you're still working, you get paid in dollars. Your property, your real estate's in dollars. All of your retirement, everything's in the dollar. And yeah. your country, for better or for worse, accidentally or purposely, is destroying the value. Maybe it's been slow, but it sure looks like it's going to accelerate. And we know from around the world, you know, Venezuela, I mean, is, is a terrible example. So we don't, we're not sitting there telling people we're going to expect hyperinflation. But I'll tell you, we're doing a lot of stupid stuff, and you can't historically do this. You, you can't just print paper and expect that everybody's going to trust it. Uh, we bought a pizza. Uh, I don't know what you're, what's a pizza down here, for a nice pizza with toppings? How what much? does it cost? Um, about 10 bucks. Okay. So we just bought, so our pizzas were 18 or $20 a year or two ago. We bought a pizza last week for the office with toppings, 33 bucks and five dollars for the driver. Right. So thirty-eight dollars for a pizza? So, you know, the, the the inflation is starting to really kick up and people are starting to feel it. Yeah. Uh, the food and energy most mostly, but you have to be concerned about this this tra if you think about a hockey stick, they're borrowing and spending that we're on the we're on the handle of the hockey stick at this point. It's 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 exponential. Thirty four trillion, you know, I, I don't know where it ends, but it, it, it's historically you can't do this. So we're trying to trying to get people to diversify a little bit, five or 10, 15% historically, if things get sloppy with inflation, that little five or 10 or 15 will protect the other 85 or 90. Right. That's all it takes. Right. And they fight us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, those battles can be can be tough battles to fight when people obviously are, Very are used complacent. to- Yeah, they're, they're complacent's the right word. And, and, they're, <laughs> and they're accustomed to a certain yeah. way of doing things. I mean, you know, always, you know, in, in, uh, in the investment world, my whole life, you know, you hear about diversification and then people say basically that means stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, right? Which is all... I have some small caps and some large caps. Large caps, right. It's all levered to the U.S. It's all levered to the dollar. It's all levered to the debt market. So right. if, you know, if you have problems there, you're going to have problems with, with everything. So, so then, okay, so then how do you, you know, what, it sounds like your sort of advice and I assume you are allowed to give financial advice given your <laughs> given your licensing and so forth. It, it sounds like your advice is um, essentially diversification but into some into some you know what are what have traditionally been considered sort of hedges against inflation or or have been considered um, you know yeah I, I'd say hedges against inflation but um, it sounds like you're you know you're interested in some of the cryptos you're interested in some of the metals you're interested in in international real estate sure, is that art, is yeah. that kind of where you're yeah I mean anything it turns out that fine art beats the S&P over time certainly um, uh, the, the lithium copper the, you know uh, all of the base metals the, the agricultural commodities silver for example if we could spend a minute there mm -hmm. the situation of silver is very strange very uh, attractive silver is about $25 an ounce 
13 years ago, it was $50 an ounce, mm -hmm. right? We had we have four years now running of deficits. Last year, well, 2022, the deficit was 238 million ounces. Record demand, medical imaging, solar panels, electric vehicles, smartphones, every electrical contact in everybody's house is silver. Record demand, a, a record shortage, 238 million ounces, and it did nothing. Right. So there's a suppression effort, gold also, platinum, a suppression effort long-standing going on. People, Some people struggle with that idea that, they, that, that, that items can be suppressed, but they certainly can. Uh, by now, I mean, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, who's the main player in that field, yeah. paid almost a billion dollar fine a couple of years ago. They're yeah. putting some traders in jail. Uh, Scotiabank, H HSBC, there's a number of players, and they do it on the COMEX, right? They have the leverage, they can suppress it. Yeah. And I think the main reason is if, if gold and silver are hitting new highs successively, people will lose faith in the money. That's a, it's the canary in the coal mine. If we can keep gold and silver quiet, then we believe in the paper longer. So yep. I, I also think you can only keep the beach ball under the water for so long, right? right? And so silver, I can't think of any other major asset that's down 50% in 12 years. It's, it's crazy. With record demand yeah, and all, a record shortage. All of the conditions would have said gold and silver new highs. Are, new highs. Are, yeah, are seeing new highs. In given, fact, we given had, the amount of printing we've done and all that. Yeah. Right. In fact, last summer, you may remember, we had a print 9.1% inflation. It was the highest since 82. So if you looked at the commodities chart, lithium, gasoline, soybeans, everything was at highs, and gold and silver and platinum were negative. Right. <laughs> we have the highest inflation in 42 years. These have worked for about three or 4,000 years, <laughs> but they're not working now. So. Yeah, I mean, I would argue, too, <laughs> I don't know what you think about this, but I would argue also that the cryptos took some pressure off of the metals as well. Because yes. capital that would have gone into met metals went went into cryptos, um, because people think, think so. that they also act as an inflation hedge, potentially with more upside, and so a lot of people, you know, piled into crypto when they would have been piling into gold and silver. I think I think that may have taken some pressure off of that market. I, well. I think so. Um, I, we're very bullish on Bitcoin, Litecoin, a few different Ethereum. Um, we, if we could talk about Bitcoin for a minute, sure. there's still we see people we don't really fight them. There's still a lot of people who think it's a scam, it's backed by nothing. They, they have dollars backed by nothing, but they think that right. Bitcoin is right. So they're very negative, it's, it's a scam. Uh, the, one of the things that makes us laugh is that, um, what's her name, the lady with the white hair in, in Europe, um, IMF head. Um, oh, uh, I should know that, I do know anyway. that. What's her name? <clears throat> the, the, uh, the financial officials in Europe and the U.S. say that Bitcoin is used, with Jamie Dimon, it's the mm. various purposes, it's money laundering, right, sure. it's drug right? dealers, yeah. And the truth is, I, whenever I see those Mexican closets with the money, that's dollars. It's, it's not Bitcoin, right? The dollar is really the biggest for, yeah. you know, unfortunately, trafficking and drugs and weapons. It's the dollar. So they just don't want people to own. But the Bitcoin story, there's, there's a, a confluence of events occurring right now. We're very bullish. We think it's going to explode. The... The, there's a halving event, you know, mm -hmm. you, you mine Bitcoin, and by protocol, every four years, the, the ha you get half, the miners get half of the reward that they were getting. So it's a supply issue, and we're almost done. This, when, when, when it's all done by protocol, there's 21 million Bitcoin. We're about 19 million now. There's very little coming. Uh, April 25th of 24 is the next halving event. If you look at the charts long term, every time there's a halving event, this thing explodes the next year or two. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, there was recently, uh, you remember what FASB is, financial yep. accounting, uh, FASB rule, financial accounting standard boards makes it easier now to hold Bitcoin as a corporate asset. Right. So if you think about the cash that some of these companies have, if just a chunk of them does what Michael Saylor did and, yep. and, and starts putting Bitcoin in, the third thing is, and it could be any day now supposedly, is there may be five or 10 or 12 cash ETFs for Bitcoin. <coughs> Fidelity, Invesco, BlackRock. Uh, grayscale if these get approved uh, is you know there's a lot of people who are not going to do a wallet and, and learn a digital wallet so fast with Bitcoin right, if, but they yeah. know how to buy me hey hey buddy buy me at fidelity buy me 50 grand of Bitcoin right so we think there's a torrent of money coming in from that so those three things are pretty much in place the fourth thing that may really blow Bitcoin out of the water is there's some pretty persistent rumors that two or three countries in Latin America and two or three in the Middle East are planning to to adopt. to adopt it. So we saw what Bukele did three years ago with uh, El yeah. Salvador, yeah. and we thought maybe somebody would follow him, uh, but it hasn't happened. But now, um, persistent rumors that Qatar or Qatar as mm -hmm. they call it, and mm -hmm. uh, and maybe United Arab Emirates or the Saudis, 
they're talking about huge investments. They, they call them sovereign wealth funds yep. instead of like an endowment or a hedge fund, sovereign wealth fund. So if they come in with, if they want to buy a million Bitcoin, where are you getting it from? There's no supply. So there could be just a dramatic explosion. You know, there's three or four catalysts or confluence of events that are very, uh, you know, even if you don't like Bitcoin, don't close your mind to it because it may be yeah. fantastic uh, going forward. Uh, may drag other cryptos with it. Certainly, they're all going to follow Big Mama Bitcoin. But the idea is just to get some money out of out of the dollar. You know, if you have everything in the dollar, and the dollar has a rough run here at 34 trillion and rising, that's the concern. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting too when you look at. Um, and certainly, there's a lot of compelling arguments for Bitcoin. I think you just made several of them, and I would agree that truly institutional money is not in yet. And it, once and that happens, the retail guy's gone. That's right. It's, it's, this thing's hundreds of thousands. That's yeah. right. And, yeah. and even mainstream retail money's not in yet. Right. Um, That's about to happen with it, the ETFs. Right. right. And and it looks to me, as, as money, you said, huge. I mean, I'm not saying anything you didn't say, but it looks to me also at, that the prerequisites that would need to be in place for that to happen are in process slash pretty well set up right at there. this point. Right so, there. Yeah. So I do agree with a lot of that. Um, yeah. So if you, as you look at, um, or, or I should say this, you know, there's, there's the lifestyle stuff, you know, in terms of when someone's thinking about where they want to live and how they want to set up their life. There's the lifestyle stuff. You mean like how they want to breathe and eat? Yes. And, and, you know, drink water yeah. so, from streams that you can drink. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a little so, bit different here. A little yeah. bit different. Exactly. And that's kind of where I'm going. You know, so well, then, I, I, excuse me for interrupting yeah, you, but, but I, you know, you tell your story that 10, 12 years ago, you were thinking, you know, I want to I want to have clean food, I want to breathe clean, I want to have water, you know, that's, and those things are no longer a given in the U.S. In fact, we could spend a whole, you know, th there's big concerns about the food and the water and the other, you know, mandates, so to speak, uh, that didn't reach here. And, you know, we can drink the streams around here. It's, it's a very different story. So for somebody who's looking for a relaxed lifestyle, also, I guess we should talk about the cost of living down here. If somebody retires in the United States with two or $3,000 uh, Social Security check, uh, maybe two of them, Good luck. and a pension, yeah. uh, down here you're living like a king and a queen, you know? So it's, it's very different. I mean, the standard of living, even Cuenca is cheap, right, relatively, but down here it's just, you know, you've got a, a really relaxed lifestyle. You do have plenty of culture uh, to, to enjoy. <clears throat> so you don't lack for that. You know, you got airports, you got buses, you got trains, you got all that stuff. So. It's just a, it's, it's an investigation. You know, we did it. Um, it's not the only place. Obviously, Costa Rica and Panama are popular, but uh, Ecuador is just fits all the, as you said, ticks all the boxes, I think, for most people, for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, you brought up um, inflation a few minutes ago. I think you said we hit a 9% number at some point. Well, last, last year, it was a 9.1 print. It was worse than 42 mm -hmm. years. They're telling us now it's only 3%, 3 on top of 9. So 12 in two years is basically. Right. So if you believe the 3, we don't believe it's 3%. Most people that we sit with at the conference table, you know, just their food bill, you know, medical property taxes, it's not 3%. Yeah. That's the number the government puts out. No, I mean, th those numbers have been phony for decades, Long and time. we know that, and, and right. that's true. Um, right. Ecuador just printed, I, I was reading this morning, Ecuador just printed its uh, an inflation number, I, I assume it was for 2022, or 2023, I should say. It was, it was like 1.3. Beautiful. Um, and, wow. that's, and that is probably also not accurate, <laughs> but, but, you know, when something here, maybe in the last couple of, you know, maybe in the last three to five years, might have gone from a dollar to a dollar ten, or a dollar twenty-five, or a dollar, you know, there may have been some yeah, very incremental, some small. But when I go back to the states, you know, a ten-dollar sandwich in the last five years is now like twenty-two, or yeah, it's, it's like nuts. eighteen. That's why I give the pizza example. It's a totally. It's yeah. just, it's just nuts. And the, a five and ten-dollar lunch is is out the door now. There's no, yeah. no such animal. And and it's like what I what I've noticed. And it bleeds into lifestyle, but it's also it also certainly you know plays a factor in economic decisions and investment decisions as well. But what I've noticed is that in general in Ecuador, there's a lot less pressure on your life than there is back home. And I think part of that is this stuff, right? So when you've got inflation the way it is back home, you've got just the cost of things you know going up as fast as they are, right. and then you've got all of the other things that add financial pressure, right? So you've got property taxes. Oh. Um, which you know, you you, you better costs. you better keep your job just to pay your property <laughs> right. taxes. Even after the house is paid. Um, even <laughs> after it's paid, because I mean, in in some places, 
Well, mean, New York and New Jersey is it can be wild. It's just yeah. insane. Um, but even my dad, I mean, he's up in rural Vermont. I think he's his tax bill like eight, six, seven, eight years ago when I was asking about it, I think it was like eight, nine thousand for in, you know, rural Vermont. in rural Vermont. Yeah, so so, so where we are, you know, <coughs> ten to twenty thousand a year is like normal standard, right? Yeah. So, you know, in Ecuador, you essentially have no property taxes. Like on a on a hundred thousand dollar valuation, you pay a hundred dollars annually. So you have essentially no no property taxes. That creates less pressure than the same thing with the inflation story. But I would argue that's true in almost every level, right? So like I've had all these I've been to a doctor a few times recently dealing with a medical thing, and I was just so struck by how that works here versus back home. The doctor cared, yep. took his took time. time. Yep. Personal. Uh, I paid, the doctor visit was $27. You know, that's what it cost me. I had some imaging done. The imaging was just because I wanted it done. I didn't have a, uh, you know, what, what do they write you? Uh, script, you know, this, yeah. yeah, for the, for the imaging. And I just went and just told them I want to have this imaging done. They're all no problem. It's you know it's eighty dollars, seventy dollars for the two images I needed. The the difference there, same with car insurance, homeowners insurance, um, yeah. all, all of it. Right in the in the states, you have to spend so much money just, just to, to be to maintain, alive. Yeah, just, right. You know, whereas, just to maintain a decent lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. And whereas whereas here, it's like people own their own homes. They don't have the pressure of the property taxes. They don't have the pressure of all of the different stuff they have to pay into. They don't have all the overheads of insurances and right. all. And it just takes the pressure out. Well, so, so if we go back to the person, even somebody with two, three thousand a month, four thousand, five thousand in the U.S. If they came here, there's money to go back, see the kids, the nieces, nephews, whatever the case, back and forth, not a problem. Right. There's there's extra money in the budget. You can go travel. You can do. So, you know, you don't have to live here the full time, but I mean, I think there's a case to be made because the, the, the money, the average retiree or person working, right, if it's remote, it, the lifestyle is, is so much calmer here and healthier. And then if that money is, is if, the, if the, the budget is like this, you've got the money to go back and visit, you know, it's, it's, a, it's something to consider. We ask people to consider it, but very, most people are, the big move is, you know, to go from the northeast to the southeast. Right, right. And Florida. Now, <laughs> Florida's now is expensive, yeah. by the way. I don't know if you know what fact. The Florida real estate, there used to be, you know, you sold up in New York and New Jersey and you did the Florida yeah. thing. It's uh, approaching parity. Uh, Florida is very expensive now. Well, few. those kinds of things are going on even in places like Idaho and Wyoming and, yeah. like, you know, Texas, Montana. Carolinas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the, not the same. So, you know, the Panama, we have clients retiring to Panama, Costa Rica. Um, it's worth it's worth consideration. Um, you know, and, and you, I know you use the phrase getting out of the matrix, that rat race type of, you know, even retirees have a bit of a matrix type of <laughs> lifestyle up there. You know, the matrix is less... Uh, there's less glitches in the matrix here, I think. Yeah. So you, you know, you, um, you know, you don't speak Spanish, correct? No, not yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> so you, so you don't, you know, you don't fully speak Spanish. You're, 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 you're from, you know, the Northeast U.S. But you come here and you're happy and you don't mind operating and you enjoy the people and you know you don't have a negative outlook. What, what do you think allows you to be successful here? Like, what is there something that well, you can speak to? Yeah, one thing, I mean, you have to, you guys say it all the time, you're, you're very smart to say it, that p people who come here have to realize that you're not in the United States, you can't, you know, my partner Louis speaks Spanish, and so he, he understood, uh, you and I in New York and New Jersey, you came here and you're frustrated, like, what the heck, everything is so slow, a no doesn't really mean no, I'll meet you at two doesn't mean eh, two, three, four, so you once told me, which I laughed at, that you realized by about the second or third year that if you made an appointment with somebody at the office at two, you should actually be downtown at two, and you know at two forty-five you'll call and you'll meet. So, so that type of stuff blew me out. So that was kind of hard because when we set up even a corporation here and when we do anything business-wise here, it's it's a very different. You know, we're used to chop chop, go to yeah. Staples, get this done. So it's a different mentality. Um, but I think the people are so welcoming and they're, they, they do want, you know, the attitude is so good. It's just a very different approach. So to be Northeasterners to come here, oof, you got to change, you got to chill out a little bit. But, um, but it's worth it because everything happens. And guess what? If it happens a little slower, that's not the end of the world, you know? What you came out of and what I'm still doing is, you know, I got to email this client right away. You know, it's, it's intense and it's... Does, does it really matter if it's the like, next day or two? So my, my nerve. It's, it's, a, it's a change of mentality, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pushing 11 years in, 
my nervous system is still unwinding from from, <laughs> from the being like, wound, so yeah. the U.S. Yeah. Get it done on time. Gotta go. I'm late. I'm gonna go. You know, I mean, my, yeah. my nervous system is yeah. still unwinding. Yeah. You and I've from, joked about this. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm <coughs> sure if I got here full time, it would be very slow for me to. It's like when I do get to, you know get to the beach, my wife. The, the you know first couple of hours, it's just I'm not. You, know, you don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm on the yeah. beach. Like, what the hell am I, do I sitting do? here? Two hours now. I have it's not good. Right. Not good. That right. matrix. No Going good. inside, get some work done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Can I bring my laptop to the beach? No, you cannot. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's there's something to be said for, for this situation. It can be frustrating, you know, an sure. American here has to really learn, you know, if some of the stories you've told me are, are funny uh, and I, I'm in the same mode being Northeast. Maybe somebody from Texas would, would have a little easier transition or from Alabama or North Carolina, but boy, the Northeast, it's tough. But it's, it's just, uh, it's so beautiful and so nice and so compelling, the whole overall story is so compelling. You know, it's worth backing off and, and, and realizing um, you, know, you got to do it their way. You're, you're in their country, you know. So you've done a you've done a good amount of traveling. Sounds like in La bo maybe other places, but you've mentioned to me about Latin America, um, Uruguay. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm curious. You know, either within Ecuador, but also outside of Ecuador. Like, what are your what are some of your favorite places that you've been? Well, I actually haven't been uh, as many places I'd like to go. Uh, we we like Uruguay. Um, uh, one of the reasons why we like it is most people can't spell it or find it, uh, yeah. so there's that. Minuscule country, I mean, it's tiny. Yeah, it's about yeah. the size of Ecuador, uh, has nice beaches. Is it, is it the same size yeah, as Ecuador? I didn't size. even know that. Yeah, I yeah, thought it was that, much not that small. small. Yeah. Very different, it's very flat, well watered, very fertile. Uh, all the populations on the coast, very small, uh, one-fifth the size of, uh, of Ecuador. 100% literacy, you know, no yeah. bad actors, very nice uh, country. Uh, same thing with uh, Costa Rica. Um, haven't really been to Mexico other than Tijuana, you know, a little bit uh, to a resort here and there. Uh, but I want to go uh, explore that more. I've been to the Caribbean, been to Europe. Um, I think, you know, Europe has problems. Europe culturally has fallen apart too. So um, I don't see that here. This is very uh, long. They're, they're, the culture here is so ingrained and so I don't know if the word is protected, but it's there's nothing shaking this. They're not doing all the wacky stuff that we're doing up north, at least not yet, or not to the degree. So, very family oriented, very. Um, Do you mean kind of culturally? Culturally, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's a respect here that's it's, it's lost in the U.S. I mean, you know, we, there's 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 groups. You know, everybody is fighting for recognition and control and power in the U.S. It's just not it's not the same here. You know, it's just a much more respectful commerce society. I mean, there's obviously there's some problems. I know that you guys had in the last election, um, the indigenous folks tried to, you know, that that would be, I think, bad for business. And I know you were concerned about that. But Guillermo, I mean, you guys have politically what's happening to, to us now is what happens down here, right? So, you know, we've had people tell us, you know, from down here, the hell's going on up there? You know, that's what we do down here. Yeah, so, right. so uh, if, if, if everything else being equal, if we're living in a banana republic up here, let's go where the bananas are. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my thought, right? If I live in a banana republic, let me come down where the bananas are and the mangoes. You know, so. No, I mean, there's. it's interesting you say that. There is some truth to that because yeah, if you're... More and more every day. <laughs> if you're talking about a scenario or a situation where sort of the the fabric of or the nature of the systems break down a bit, you'd rather be in a place where people are used to that Absolutely. versus a place where people are very used to relying on all of these functioning systems, services, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, to your point, the sim simpler situation here, if things got sloppy up north, you could have problems in the stores with food, trucks, whatever. You know, you go to a Mercado here, there's 850 little farmers bringing potatoes and strawberries and sugarcane. I mean, it's not, I, I, I struggle to think, you know, the, 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 the ease of getting electricity here and, and internet, all, you know, it's just uh, seems like a, uh, a more secure, ironically, right? We talked about Ecuador versus the U.S. for the last 50 years. It seems it's more in your favor to be a little protected and safer here compared to being totally dependent on the grid up there and and, uh, and things functioning smoothly. You know, it could get, you know, it has gotten sloppy in different cities and stuff, yeah. so. <clears throat> Excuse me, so have we, you know, kind of the stuff that concerns you that's going on in the U.S., mm. 
Have we covered that, or do you want to talk, talk about some of that a little bit? Because, I mean, I don't know, Bob, how long ago we met. It's got to be like six, seven, eight years now yeah. or something like that, yeah, right? Five or six, yeah. Five least, or yeah. six, yeah. So I think since I've, you know, since I've met you, and if I can talk for myself going back to like 2010, 11, 12, um, you know, I was concerned, in this case, you were concerned about X, Y, or Z yeah. thing taking place in the U.S., right? And so, which, which makes people look at other options, either, either to live or to park their capital. Um, do you want to talk about a little bit, like, what you see kind of happening in the U.S. and what some you of wanna, those concerns are? You want to go are? down this path? <laughs> well, if you do. <laughs> well, I, I emailed you a few years ago uh, to, to get you to admit a little rabbit hole stuff, and you, you were cautious, but eventually you came <laughs> like that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I think there's more truth down the rabbit hole today than there is on the surface, so to speak. I don't trust, other than the Yankees lost and it's raining in Philly, I, I don't trust any of the news anymore, which is terrible. I don't want to be in that position. I don't trust the government's unemployment is this, inflation is this, the GDP was 5% really for the last quarter, unemployment, come on. Right. So I think more and more people don't, don't trust the, you know, the mainstream media. Uh, I think what happened in the last election um, in the fall of 16, I think October 15th to be exact, all of these uh, alternative voices on YouTube, I mean a dozen or more, we're just taken down. That's right. Where the hell am I living? So but you, you can't hear that opinion. I mean, that's essentially right. Uh, Twitter until no. Musk took it over. So, um, so the, the the censorship was the most alarming because that's really Nazi Soviet. Yeah. You, you can't hear. We'll decide what you hear. Wow. It's the equivalent We're, of book burning. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. So that's so, censorship. You can't read this. You yeah. can't hear this. You can't see this. Um, so just some alarming trends. Also, I think, and there's more to come. What I think the public finding out what what the politicians in Hollywood and these people do behind the scenes to the children and you know, it's just some some really dark stuff going on. Yeah. You know, you're opening the who wants who wants an open border where you you can't the number one tennis player couldn't come into a, a, a you know um, Australia. Australian yeah. couldn't couldn't come in because he wasn't vaccinated, but we can let fourteen thousand people a day come in with tuberculosis or rape it. What are you talking about? It's like insane. So I don't know who I don't know you know who can really support that. So this is just alarming. But if you really have millions of people coming in, and then you look at who's coming in versus you know you look at the the status, it's young, <laughs> young, military age guys. How did you get? You're from China. You're from Yemen. You're from Syria. You're from Angola. How the hell did you get to the Mexican border? Who? How did you get there? Right. So there's great. You know we're in strange waters it's very troubling anybody with some common sense has to be alarmed and then so do you kid yourself and say okay so the whole fabric all common sense is lost the prosecutors don't prosecute they do crazy stuff to kids in school and and your investments you're going to be fine with your million or five million everything's going to be fine that'll continue it's not what history shows right when you when you have that type of thinking at the top and you don't enforce the rule of law or your own borders so I think the naive, I, I use the word complacency again, We're, we are amazed at how complacent people are. They'll sit there and complain with us about these things, but they're okay with 85% of the stock market. Really? Wow. And then, you know, the stock market, um, you know, there are bear market cycles on average every seven years. The average is 40%. The last two were 50. Uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, March of 20, well, let me go back, February, late February of 20, Louis and I are looking at the TV in the conference room, and, and there's you know ten lane highways in China empty. Yep. Wow, what the heck? The second largest economy, and the American stock market's hitting highs. What the? Well, the next month, March, in one month, the market fell 37 percent. But then they printed money like crazy, trillions, and by October, you were back to even. That's not normal. That's <laughs> that's not a bear market. Unfortunately, it's six or 12 or 18 months, or maybe a lost five or 10 year period. So nobody wants those, but they are. They're needed. That's, they're called cycles for a reason. So when you just print money to eliminate that that natural cycle, that cleansing, painful cycle, what the hell happens when you you know yeah. the collapse gets worse? That's yeah, all. Right? Yeah, thank you. You yeah. just you just postpone, and it's it just gets worse. It's kind of like the suppression of silver. Yeah. Silver is not going to go to fifty or seventy-five. It's got to go crazy, right? If they mess, the, how could how could Bitcoin fall asleep for two years? Given what's going on, right? So. It, you, you hate to sound like a lunatic, but there are clearly rigged 
in one direction or other. A lot of things are rigged. They're not real. They're, they're suppressed. The news is false. <laughs> You know, it's very hard to, so we're trying to get, you know, bulk of what we do is try to get people to understand they need money to last as long as they do. Oh, and by the way, taxes might go up, and by the way, inflation might go up, and you might get sick. So it's, we, we use the analogy of climbing down a mountain, <clears throat> and there's, you know, peaks and crags and loose gravel to slip on. And so if you want to leave a legacy to loved ones, if that's important to you, we, we only have to get past all these big problems, right? <clears throat> so it's not simple. It's, um, you know, the idea that somebody's just going to, just going to pull money off their portfolio. Okay, your portfolio is down 48% and it's been six years. And you're pulling, guess what? You're going to run out of money. So it's, you know, you don't want to be gloomy and doomy, but when the markets are high, we worry about crashes. When the markets are low, we want to scoop up the pearls on the beach after the storm. And it's, so we love stocks. We just don't like them right now. What are, um, what are the <clears throat> pearls on the beach right now? Well, it's certainly silver. It's certainly platinum. Um, it's certainly things like here, right? If you can, I mean, maybe you should speak for a minute or two. You've got projects. Why don't you tell people what they can do either from a house standpoint or from a, a community or from agricultural? I mean, you know, we've talked about it for you. Why don't you tell people what the upside is here? Yeah, they can I make mean, money in watermelons, you told me, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can make, you can make money. I mean, here, here's how I look at Ecuador. Um, you know, so again, I'm, I'm about, I'm almost 11 years in, uh, ran a couple, you know, we've done a few different businesses here, we've lived here, so on and so forth. The, the way I look at Ecuador is, it's an interesting, it's like a, it's a very kind of beautiful sort of dichotomy, if we're just talking about from an investment business standpoint. Um, you know, it has more opportunity than you could ever ask for. Right. Uh, so with, much. With less competition, right? Because the average. I mean, none, essentially. Oh, right. The, the, because the, the, the mentality and the, the finances here, the average American, you know, to be polite, can come here and kick, you know what, and take names if they want to, right? Well. To some degree. With the business experience, for sure, right? So, in fact, in any walk of life, I used to joke, this is going to be off color, I apologize, but I used to, <laughs> I used to joke with a former, I mean, a good friend and a former business partner of mine that, like, if a, if a guy from the States, who has a lot of game with women ever came here, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd 10x his results, <laughs> right? And it's, it's, kind, it's kind of like that with, with everything, right? It's not a, um, it tends to, be a, tends to be a very kind, caring, f family-oriented culture that is not super uh, uh, entrepreneurially oriented, right, right. Um, who, who, you know, don't necessarily look at their life and economics the same way we do, and, and, the, the barrier to entry for international capital has been such that there practically isn't any um, in the country because of its history. Right. So, and they're welcoming. Um, they're very, they're very welcoming, right. but they don't have the business infrastructure in place for large players to even, for it to even be worth it for them to go through the due diligence to even look at Ecuador. So you don't have, you don't have international ag in right. any sort of real way in the country, you don't have, you know, there's some large companies, certainly, there's, there's people, you know, there's co the corporations business, doing the flowers, stuff. Yeah. The, the shrimp, yeah. You're competing with no one, you right. know, in general, over your incredible. idea. So the opportunity is incredible. The, the downside is that execution is 10x more difficult. So <laughs> right. you've got 10x the opportunity, and then you've got 10x the difficulty in executing, um, because creating systems, creating teams, creating processes, Fighting all that stuff tape, is yeah. much more difficult. Um, and it's more time consuming. But if you fight through it and you have a team of, I know you mentioned just in the other day that you, you use Milton, you said something very clever. You said, at this juncture, you can get everything done. But Milton, the nuances in the, the, the colloquialisms and the, the mechanics, Milton could do it faster, cheaper, better than you. So why not yeah. use locals, right? And then if we can employ locals and help them out and the whole, the whole you know, we, we want to, we want to, the more we get things going down here, we want to help the locals. We want to pay them more. We want to, uh, we just are hooking up with a couple of um, charitable uh, foundations, yes. um, uh, mostly uh, medical. You know, there's such a need. They can't get prescriptions. They can't get an eye operation. They can't get, you know, it's, it's, uh, so Ed Lindquist, uh, nice, our, nice. Our, our buddy is, uh, we call him the unofficial mayor of yeah. Cuenca. He really and is. And he's going strong. He's in his 90s, isn't he? No, 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 no his 70s, yeah. Oh, 70s, okay. No, I don't no, know he's, for some he's reason going strong. I had it in my head that he he's unstoppable. He has yeah. more. He has as many business ideas as you and I do. He's a, I hope when I get to... He's <laughs> yeah, I don't know him. I talked to him on the phone one. He seemed like a great guy. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's great. So he's um, he's got things going. Cuenca's a tough... He was explaining to us at dinner the other day. Cuenca's a great city, you know. 
it's kind of tough to do business there. They don't, they don't promote, you know, it's, it's a UNESCO heritage site. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a beautiful city. Uh, he's frustrated because they don't promote the city, you yeah. know? People find it anyway with the internet these well, days. Well, see, that's but a great... You guys are doing such a service to southern Ecuador no, but here. that's a great... You guys are doing such a... You're opening so many eyes to what's here and how, to, how you can live. There's not the equivalent to Cuenca that, that I'm right? aware of. There's some people on the internet, no, you know, Shapey sure, and sure. Amelia type of thing. Yeah. But no, I mean, that, doing, that's a know. good example, though, kind of, of what we're talking about, because <coughs> take Vilcabamba, for example, right? Vilcabamba should be and is the jewel of this region. Mm -hmm. It's what's on the map in this region. It's what people should know about. When you, Vilcabamba has worse facilities in terms of public facilities than just about any town in Ecuador. Right? I mean, there's, there's not a good playground for the kids, there's not a basketball court, the, the soccer field's in that terrible shape, the, and on and on and on, right? <laughs> and um, why? Why would the politicians in this area not s see the big picture and say, hey, we need to pump some money into this yeah, town sure. specifically, right. specifically because it represents right. us, and then right. we need to promote it, and we need to bring... <clears throat> People here just don't really think that way. Right. And so... And so again, it creates both the opportunity yep. and sort of the difficulty of right. getting where you're trying to get to. Well, so to your point, so the road from Cuenca to Loja, straight down beautiful, right down the ridge of the mountains, most of it, 90% of the highway is great. But there's parts of it, and also from, from uh, Guayaquil to Cuenca, right? Mm -hmm. We do both. It's, it blows our minds that, you know, you think about it, there's money, the Galapagos is big money, oil, bananas, fruits, shrimp, there's money, come on. Take a little chunk, fix the roads. So we, we, hit, we hit parts of the road where there was a landslide or something or a washout, and it's a year or two. They haven't fixed it. The bus has to go like this, the truck, <coughs> you know, the gasoline truck. What are you doing, man? Pay, fix it, put a retaining wall. I know it's money. Put the nets, put the retaining wall. It's like five spots. What yeah. are you doing? Just, it, and everybody agrees, by the way. Everybody oh, says, sure, yeah, you're right, sure, it's great. Sure. So, I, I, you know, it's priorities. I mean, there's, there's, right. there's you know, just unbelievable. So that, there's things like that. I mean, we complain about the roads in the U.S., but we do, if we have a rock slide area, they build a retaining wall and then that thing. I mean, that, you don't, you can't take the main road from Cuenca to Loja, your third to your fourth largest city. What are you doing? So it's things like that. It's hilarious yeah, almost. It you is. Know, yeah, you kind of just have to just roll with the punches here and say, you know, I'm not in the U.S. And some things they do better here. So, I mean, live, you know, right? Yeah. Eat and live. Well, and some of those dichotomies, too, it's like, it's like the inefficiency of some of those things <laughs> also means that they leave you alone in your life for the most part. True that. So it's like a, it's kind of a balance there. It's like the roads are good enough. It's fine. You know, the, <laughs> everything's kind of good right. enough. <laughs> don't be tracking And they everything. leave me alone, exactly. so it's not too bad. That's fine. Whereas, yeah. Let me go get my milk. Yeah. <laughs> right. right, if the roads were perfect, but they're bothering me about all this other exactly. stuff, you know. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a trade-off. I'm, I'm, I'm on your side with that one, yeah. So yeah, much less, uh, the, the, the situation, you know, in the United States now in terms of tracking everything, maybe down here too, you know, if you talk, if we talk and our phone listens to us about a red Alfa Romeo, you're going to see the ads at night. Sure. You know, they're, they're tracking every, it's tra driving us crazy, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, it's even, there's been some weird stuff where like people are having the thoughts and it's popping up on their phone. And they're like, I swear I never said this. I, I only I thought about it. That's yeah. not cool. That's, yeah. that's a problem. No, I mean, I've seen a few <laughs> cases in my personal circle of that that was a little that's wild. Um, Bob, is there anything we haven't covered yet that you want to talk about that I haven't, that I haven't brought up? Well, we've been pretty wide ranging. I, I just think that, you know, th th people should be aware. We're trying to get people to just be careful, right? We're in strange waters. The world's on fire, and, and, and it, you know, I'm speaking more of the financial markets. Just protect, not forever, but for now. If things are crazy and the markets are unexplainably strong, right? Here's, here's a couple stats real quick. You've heard of the leading, uh, the index of leading economic indicators, right? Sure. Down 19 months in a row. Okay. 84% wow. of CEOs think there's a recession coming this year. 84%. Wow of CEOs. Wow. I'll go with the CEOs over Janet Yellen, right? Yeah. So nobody wants a recession, but if that's the case, right, then protect your capital. You should adopt more of a protective stance. At least we've got 5% money now. It's not exciting, but it's positive five is better than minus 32. Just recognize nothing that the, no tree grows to the sky. And then if you have a lot of powder dry 
and there is a storm and there's pearls on the beach, guess what? We're not fools. We're going to scoop them up. So you'll be a little richer than you thought in five or ten years. So we're just very cautious. I think globally there's a lot of wacky stuff going on. We worry about another pandemic coming. God forbid. I don't know. But, you know, so no, I think we've covered, I think, you know, the, the pitch that you guys are making to everybody, the educational aspect between the retreats and your podcast is tremendous because people don't know. We didn't know when I, when I found you. It was like, wow, you know, this guy's doing it. He's from Brooklyn. My God, I was thrilled. So, you know, I think people also in Cuenca. The other thing I guess we should mention, because down here too, the medical, you know, the doctors and dentists are trained usually in the U.S. or whatever. They come here back here. So you wouldn't have eight thousand Americans in Cuenca if there wasn't very older. If there wasn't excellent right. Cuenca, MRIs the Cuenca and expat surgeries and, is mostly retirement age. Yeah, and so you wouldn't have unless you had excellent medical. You wouldn't have that situation. English is widely spoken. You should, of course, learn Spanish. But I mean, I think it's just a nice situation. The climate here today, you know, if you go to Panama or Costa Rica, it's hot. You got to be in that. Mm. You say all the time on your podcast, it's crazy here. It's like it's, it's San Diego. It's not humid. I know if you go to Zumba, it's humid. If you go to sure. the Orient, it's Zamora, but it's beautiful here. So I think the climate, I know Carl talks about it all the time too, and the mangoes and the. Just the, the whole different thing. It's just a great, great appeal. I, I, we, we like all these other countries, but you know, this is our favorite, and so I think with with some reason. If um, if people are interested in your services, if they want to do some retirement planning or some financial planning, is there? Uh, are you guys looking? Yeah, NewCenturyPlanning.com, and we have we just shot in the last year. 24 short educational videos on important topics, Roth conversions or long-term care, inflation hedging, legacy planning. So there's, we have white papers on, on the, under the education tab. We have short videos. Um, obviously with your permission, I'll post this up there. But I think, um, uh, I think there's enough there to start for people. And I, again, you know, in the current circumstances, protection of capital, don't underestimate the need for income. If you live to 85 or 95, like my dad, you need income. Right? Maybe we should build in some boosts in the future, get some money out of the dollar. Don't forget about long-term care. Don't forget about tax planning. It's, you know, we swim in these waters every day. It's fairly complicated. Not to say that the, the front end 30, 40 years of accumulation is easy, but it's, it's more straightforward. You know, we see people, frankly, successful people, they kept their head down, they stayed healthy, maybe they stayed married, maybe they didn't, but basically they had a, a pretty nice run and they won the game. And so we're trying to tell them politely, you, you won the game, you know, stop playing a little bit. Right. <laughs> There's no reason Switch for you to Switch modes have, a little bit. Switch yeah. modes a little bit, yeah. right? But um, much harder getting down the mountain than, than the front end. Um, so, but no, thank you. We covered a lot of ground today. It was great. Awesome. Well, thank you thank for you. taking the time. Yeah, good I to enjoyed see you. It. Thank you. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell as well so you're notified of new content. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Hey, thanks. Awesome. If you're interested in real estate properties, all of our property videos will now be uploaded on a different channel. Please click the link in the description down below.